Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Today is January 30th, 2012. I'm picking up right where I left off in the last episode. I was just working on the two core data type uh, protected method, which I think will resolve the combinatorial pro explosion problem I've been having. Um, what I'm doing is I'm creating a new subtype of dollars called user enter dollars. It's going to hold the actual string the user enters, and this should make persistence either easier. I think it will actually clean up a lot of stuff in the code. And um, in implementing this, I ran into this problem where everything needed to know if it was an instance of user entered dollars or not. Um, it was getting really messy, and so I added this new method called two core data type, which was supposed to be protected, and um, in hopes that that would clean it up. And just finished getting that new method in, and now get to see if it's actually going to do any cleanup. So. Um, I don't know that it's going to help equals all that much. Actually, it might even help equals. So let's start there. Um, the problem is not so much that how we handle when our own object, you know, knowing what our own object is, this is okay. Um, the problem is more on the other side of things. So here in valid dollars, when I look at equals, I have to say, is it an instance of user enter dollars? That's no good. I'm also doing, is it an instance of invalid dollars? That's no good. I think what I need to do is say, uh, if object is null, return false. That's great. Well, first, let's just make sure everything's passing. I do have tests around all this stuff, so I can just refactor. Yeah, so I want to say, if null, return false. Great. If, but then at that point, we can convert it into a dollars object. So we'll call it dollars that equals dollars object. And um, if that, if it's not valid, then it's not equal because valid dollars is only equal to valid dollars. Okay, and uh, after that, we're going to return, oh, well, they're equal if they round off pennies. Um, I think I'm going to modify round off pennies to take an amount, but for now, I'm just going to take it. Yeah, let's make a version of round off pennies. Yeah, let's make a version of round off pennies that takes the value. Um, so we're going to say return this, or round off pennies, this dot to core data type equals round off pennies that to core data type. And what's that, what we've done there is we've completely gotten rid of the needing to know the runtime types of the other objects, which eliminates our double dispatch problem, I hope. Let's see if this passes. Yes, it does. That's great. Okay. All right, so now that we've got that working, cool, 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 cool. That's that's really good. Um, and I'm, the tests on that were really, really solid, so I don't feel too bad about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. So invalid dollars equals, again, we shouldn't have to say whether or not it's a user entered dollars. We should just have to say, um, well, first, if 
if object equals null, we return false. And then um, I think it's just a matter, we'll say it's a dollars. And then we can just return that is valid. If it isn't valid, then it's equal. All invalids are equal to each other. And if it is valid, then it's then this isn't then it doesn't work. Perfect. Okay. Again, got rid of our double dispatch. That's fantastic. Really happy with the improvements here. Okay. So next, um, oops, I got rid of my. Next comes um, plus. So here, here I think it's okay because you, it's okay for user to enter dollars to know about its own class. What I didn't like was the fact that valid dollars and invalid dollars had to know about a different class. And I feel like we're, we're slowly resolving that. First, let's get rid of this. So let's find all uses of round off pennies. Right. Actually, you know what we can do? We'll keep both of these. I think this dot amount would be clearer. There we go. There, they're both useful. So next, so that should still work. Next, it was plus that needed some help. Um, now, if I take this out, that it will fail. Yeah. Can't be cast to a valid dollars, because that's how amount works. But if amount, instead of casting to a valid dollars, instead says dollars dot two core data type, that should work. Yes, okay, and now we can inline this because it's really just that simple. Wow, that cleans things up nicely. That is great, that is great. Now, if only we could figure out a way to get rid of this duplication everywhere. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see a way. Um, okay, all right, so now Uh, let's take a look at invalid dollars. We had done plus. That just always returns invalid dollars, so no worries there. Okay. Okay, now we can move on to the next one. Um, so now we don't have any of that funky turning the, you know, calling back into user enter dollars. This is a big improvement. I'm really happy with it. All right, so now let's do minus. Now here, we're always asking for the backing value. Um, and I suppose that's okay. The, I think what I wanna do though, is rather than doing this everywhere, which I don't really like, um, I think what I'll do is um, I think I need a backing dollars method. Yeah. I need a backing dollars method that works on passed in values. Yeah. So make a method
if dollars is a user enter dollars return dollars dot backing dollars otherwise just return dollars What's this complaining about? Oh, it's not being used yet, but that's okay. Okay. And let's rename this for backing dollars four just to make it a little read a little better. Um yeah, that should work. And it should work even better than that, actually. And that I should be able to take this out and this out and have it work. But you know what? I don't think I even need to do that anymore because I've got that two core data type. I should be able to just do this. Yeah, yeah, that was a hack. So I'll take this back out, I don't need it. Um, and down here, do I need this? Um, I'm not so sure that I do. No, I don't. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. That is such a great cleanup. Okay. Wow, that just totally fixed it. Totally fixed it. All right. So now, now I can do minus. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, from here on out, it should go pretty quickly, I think. And I'm going to go ahead and be fairly completionist about the tests. but I don't expect it to be an issue from this point forward. That failed because it hasn't been implemented yet, but now that should pass. Is not so good, but I'm not going to worry about it. This should just work, well, except for maybe I've got the actual values wrong. Uh, let's see, got one minus three should be minus two. All right. Well, that's what we'll pick up with in the next video. We're out of time for this one. Thanks very much for watching. I will catch you next time.